what percent of cancer would you think is related to smoking? This is a subject that has been studied and published in thousands of medical articles. In fact, we know that right around 30% of all known cancers are related to, are associated with smoking cigarettes, tobacco use. It's a huge amount. In other words, if everybody in the entire country stopped smoking, 10, 20 years from now, we would expect to see 30% of all cancers vanish. Wouldn't that be wonderful? Now, let me ask you another question. What percent of cancer do you suppose is related to having low levels of vitamin D? Because you see, when we're in the sun, and this is the sun that's around 10 o'clock to 4 o'clock, the sun has to be 45 degrees in the sky before the ultraviolet B radiation is powerful enough to penetrate the skin and cause a molecular shift in a certain form of cholesterol that then transforms, literally electromagnetically transforms that cholesterol into vitamin D. Isn't that wonderful? But we have to be in the sun at the right time, and it doesn't take that long. In fact, 10 minutes or so for the average person, less for a fair-skinned individual or more for, for individuals of darker skin to get enough vitamin D to get that benefit. So 90% of the vitamin D in your bloodstream right now has come from the sun. It doesn't come from the diet. Don't, don't think that drinking milk is going to give you enough vitamin D because it never will. Uh, don't, don't even think that taking cod liver oil is going to give you enough vitamin D because even though it has quite a bit, unless it's purified, it's not going to give you enough. In fact, I typically recommend if you're going to use an omega-3 oil, or especially if you're going to use a fish oil or cod liver oil, make sure that it's been molecularly distilled. That means that, that they have chemically extracted all the good oils, the DHA and the, and the EPA, and they've left all the mercury and the dioxins and the pesticides and all the toxins out. In today's environment, we can't afford to be taking in more toxic chemicals. And so I recommend we use a purified form of these oils if you use them. And of course, you're not getting any vitamin D if you do that. So, how many cancers are related to this, this phenomenon in our society that's that, that where we have so low level of vitamin D. About five years ago, I was scanning the research as I try to do every day, and I came across a study that just floored me. This study was a meta-analysis done out of Harvard where they take multiple studies, 40, 50 studies, and group them together to get greater statistical power. And they showed that more than 30% of all cancers could be eliminated if we practice the strategies of light therapy, being out into the sun, and making sure that our blood levels are optimal. Now, how are you going to know if your blood levels are optimal? You have to test your blood. In fact, there's no good substitute. I believe that anybody who's concerned about their health, who wants to optimize their health, and certainly people who are concerned about possible family history of cancer, and we live in a family that is at high risk of cancer, right? One out of three individuals in our great country will die of cancer. And we're starting to understand with this new research that a lot of that is completely avoidable. In fact, the researcher who was commenting on this study said something that, that I thought was, was extremely important. He said the power of vitamin D levels in your blood, of having high levels of vitamin D in your blood, the power of that to prevent cancer is greater than the power of cigarette smoking and its ability to cause cancer. Talk about a public health revolution. We're, we're focusing so much on 
on dealing with issues of tobacco, rightly so, because we could eliminate a large part of cancer by doing that. And yet, many times we're avoiding the simplest strategies available to us today that has even greater power